really gloss over that and think of it in terms of the whole word of God because I really couldn't connect with the idea of delighting in a list of rules. I really couldn't connect with the idea uh, of staying up all night meditating on the rule book. I thought that was very Old Testament sounding. The law doesn't apply to us anymore. We're under grace. And it wasn't until I understood the Sermon on the Mount and I understood the story of Zacchaeus that I really understood what it means to delight in the Lord's commands. Beloved, listen to me. His commands aren't merely a list of rules. His commands are a revelation of himself. They're a revelation of his divine nature. They're a revelation of his perfect character. They're a revelation of his goodness, uh, of his kindness, of his fairness, uh, of his care and his consideration uh, of others. They're a revelation of God's will for us. God's law or his commands is how God behaves. It's how God treats others. And the law is beautiful because it is a picture of God himself. The beautiful life of Jesus was the embodiment of all the righteousness described in the law. Jesus fulfilled all the law. That's the message of the Sermon on the Mount. So to delight in his commands doesn't mean to delight in a rule book. It doesn't mean to delight in a a moral code or a set of ethics. It, It is to delight in the holy, good, beautiful nature of God himself. And it's a desire in my heart to imitate everything that he is. It's an inner desire to be good like he's good. It's an inner desire to be kind and compassionate and merciful and fair, to be consecrated to God like Jesus was. That's what happened to Zacchaeus when he met Jesus. Something changed in Zacchaeus' heart. Do you remember the story? Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree. And Jesus said, come down, Zacchaeus, I want to have a word with you. Zacchaeus had spent his entire life defrauding people. He had spent his entire life cheating people. But when he met Jesus, something changed in his heart. And the man who had spent his whole life cheating people all of a sudden wanted to do good for them. In fact, he wanted to do good far above and beyond what the law even required. That's a good picture of what it means to delight in his commands. Beloved, listen, here's the first good tweetable line of the night. (laughs) When your heart is wowed by God, you don't just love his promises, you love his precepts too. You love the pure lifestyle he prescribes. You love his prohibitions. You don't chafe against his prohibitions. His commands are not burdensome to you. You love his commandments. They're beautiful to you because they're a reflection of his beautiful character. I wonder how many people can say that on this New Year's Eve. How many people can say, my heart has been wowed by God. I want to tell you something, Jesus wowed my heart when I was eight years old. I will never forget it, and I have been wowed ever since. How many of you can say, my desire is to be more and more like him. I don't just love his promises, I love his precepts. How many of you can say that tonight? You know, that's good news. Because if the Lord is your delight then I can tell you what you have to look forward to in 2014. I want to share four blessings with you very quickly from Psalm 112. The first one is this. When the Lord is your delight, your house will be blessed. Blessed is the man whose heart is wowed by God, whose desire is to be more and more like him. His children will be mighty in the land. 
he will be blessed during the years of his life. Wealth and riches will remain in his house. Beloved, when the Lord is your delight, your family will be blessed. Your marriage will be blessed. Your children will be blessed. Your children's children will be blessed. The future generations of your family will be blessed. Your children will be blessed in their infant and in their toddler years. They'll be blessed in their teenage years, their childhood years. They'll be blessed with confidence. They'll be blessed with inner security and peace. They'll be blessed with godly wisdom for good life choices. They'll be blessed with divine protection. They'll be blessed in their friendships. They'll be blessed in their schoolwork. They'll be blessed in all their pursuits. They'll be blessed in their early adult years. They'll be blessed with open doors of opportunity, with divine creativity, with success in their careers, with good spouses and healthy children with stature and godly influence in the community. They'll be leaders in the church. That's what it means to be mighty in the land. They'll be blessed in their middle age years with marital satisfaction, with the joy of life, with good health and longevity. They'll be blessed in their senior years, even after you've gone on ahead of them to heaven. The blessing of the Lord will remain on them because of you. Here's the second good tweetable line of the night. The best thing that you could ever do for your children's future is love Jesus right now. When the Lord is your delight, your finances will be blessed. Wealth and riches will remain in his house. Don't blow any prophetic instruments of declaration yet, all right? <laughs> Beloved, listen to me. When your heart is wowed by God, he gives you the ability to get wealth. And he gives you the ability to hang on to your wealth. And I've lived enough of life now to learn that one is just as difficult as the other. Notice two things with me about riches. First of all, God is in your heart and riches are in your house. When riches are in your heart, there's no room for God there. When riches are in your heart, there's never enough riches in your house. But when God is in your heart, he sends wealth and riches into your house. <laughs> Beloved, listen to me. If your delight is in the Lord, I can tell you how 2014 is going to go down for you. I can't tell you how it's going to happen. Only God knows that. But I can tell you what the outcome will be. The Lord is going to give you the opportunity to earn money. And he's going to give you the wisdom to manage your money. And at the end of the year, there will be more than just enough to make ends meet. There will be a surplus. There will be wealth and riches second thing about riches, earthly riches will stay with your house. They'll stay with your family, but your home is in heaven. Your earthly wealth will not stay with you, but the righteous heart that you've cultivated, it will go with you all the way to heaven. Wealth and riches will remain in his house, but his righteousness endures forever. When the Lord is your delight, your house will be blessed this year. It says the generation of the upright will be blessed. What that means is you're going to see it with your own eyes. It's going to happen in your lifetime. You're going to be blessed now. You'll be blessed today. You're going to be blessed tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Your children and your finances, they're going to be blessed on January 1st. They're going to be blessed on January 2nd. They're going to be blessed on January 3rd. They're going to be blessed on May 22nd. They're going to be blessed on September 15th and on December 31st, the blessing of the Lord, it's going to come and it's going to stay. You know, I was typing up my notes and when I was typing about God blessing our finances, spell check changed it to fiancés. And you know, I just feel like there's somebody here. Come on, if you want it, claim it. You're going to have a fiancé by December 31st. 2014. You're going to be engaged. He's going to be good too. He's going to, don't you settle for some loser. You wait for a Boaz. God's going to send you a good man. He's going to send you a man of noble character. 
If he wears sweatpants and lays on the couch, kick him to the curb, all right? Wait, because God's got something better for you. Four blessings from Psalm 112. When the Lord is your delight, second, your heart will be steady. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright. Good will come to him. Surely he will never be shaken. He'll have no fear of bad news. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is secure. Even if. I want you to say those words with me this evening, if you would. Even if. Come on, say it again. Even if. Even if darkness comes against me. Even if adversities come my way. Even if unexpected trials arise, even if people come at me from nowhere, even if the enemy of my soul launches an all-out offensive against me, even if there's bad news in 2014, even if I get a bad medical report or someone I love gets a bad medical report, even if there's conflict in my relationships, even if there's a dust up at work, even if there's trouble in the economy or in the world. How many of you know that even ifs are just part of life here? They were a part of 2013. They were a part of 2012. They were a part of the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and the 00s. <laughs> and they'll probably be part of 2014 too. Oh, Pastor Glenn, don't speak that. Well, David spoke that. He said, the righteous man will have many troubles, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. Jesus said, you will have trouble in this world, but be courageous. I have already overcome the world. Even ifs are bound to happen in 2014, but even so, I will not be afraid. I will not be shaken. I will not be moved. I will not be swayed. I will not be overcome. I will not be ashamed. I will not lose heart. I will not lose faith in God. I will not give ground. I will not be deterred. I will not quit. I will not be defeated. Even if darkness overwhelms me, the light of holy hope in Christ Jesus, my Lord, will dawn for me. For you who fear my name, the Son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. Even if bad news surprises me, good will come to me. My heart will be steadfast, secure, Trusting confidently in the Lord. Four blessings from Psalm 112. When the Lord is your delight. Number three, your hand will be open to help others. Good will come to him who is generous and lends freely. Who is fair and above board in all his business. He will sow seed widely among the poor. Beloved, I want to tell you, if the Lord is your delight, you're not just going to survive this coming year, you're going to thrive. Amen. And out of the overflow of blessings in your life, you are going to be a blessing to others. Amen. You're going to have an overflow of finances that will allow you to make holy investments in the lives of others. You're going to be able to give more than you thought to phase two. It's an investment in the lives of people who are going to come. Look at this church. We just can't get any more in here. You know what? There are hundreds of more people who want to be here tonight, and they can't get in. We're going to do it. Next year, we're going to be in a shell of the new building, and we can fill it with 1,000 people. How about that? You're going to be able to give a hand up to people who need help. 
Beloved, I want to tell you, we have some precious, precious friends in our congregation who desperately need transportation right now. They need a car so they can get to work. They need a car so that they can get to church. We have one of our friends who serves and serves and serves here who right now takes a couple of buses and bicycles and trolleys and scooters to get here just to come and help clean the building. My heart is burdened. You know, it says in the early church, they didn't have any need among them. I, I just feel like God's got to do something something in January of this year and meet those needs. You're going to have an overflow of talent. You're going to have an overflow of godly wisdom. You're going to have an overflow of good counsel. You're going to have an overflow of encouragement. You're going to have an overflow of faith. You're going to have an overflow of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And you're going to use the overflow of your life to make godly investments in the lives of others in 2014. Four blessings from Psalm 112. When the Lord is your delight, your house will be blessed. Your heart will be steady. Your hand will be open to help. And finally this, your horn will be lifted up high. Pastor Jason, come and help me. Worship team, come and help me. In the end, he will look triumphantly on his foes. His horn will be lifted high in honor. To the Jewish people, an animal horn was a symbol of strength. It was a symbol of status. It was a symbol of kings. It was a symbol of a king's dominance, of his military might. And here is the promise in those words. Your horn will be lifted high. The promise is this. You are going to finish strong. I've been watching people whine on Facebook all day. About how hard 20, 2013 was so hard. You know what? I, I know... I know, I know that there are genuinely some difficult moments. I had some, you had some too. But I want to tell you, here's God's promise. You're going to finish 2014 in a strong position. I don't know how the year's starting for you. I don't know the even ifs that might come your way. But if your heart is wowed by God, I can tell you with certainty how it's going to end for you. You will see true victory. You will finish with your heart rejoicing. You'll finish with your head lifted up high. You'll finish with dignity and with honor. The people who opposed you, the people who betrayed you, the people who laughed at your big dreams, they're going to see you at the end of the year standing on the mountaintop. You're going to finish stronger than you started. You're going to finish happier than you started. More secure, more mature, wiser, godlier, gentler, lovelier than you started. You're even going to look better at the end of this year. Now, that's not in Psalm 112, but I just added that part, and it's true. You're going to look better. I want you to tell somebody, look over at them, say, you're going to look better next New Year's Eve. See, it's true. You believe it already. See, weren't you encouraged? You believe it already, don't you? So I have just one thing to say to 2014. Bring it. Come at me, bro. Obamacare, norovirus going around, Wall Street jitters. Bring it on. Uncertainty at work. Corporate merger, new position, new boss, new project, new competition. Yeah, bring it on. Teenagers in the house, Jesus help us. <laughs> Grocery bills and braces and college tuition and car troubles, bring it on. All the question marks in my life right now, all the concerns, all the cares, bring it on. Phase two, come at me, bro. I'm ready for you. Bring it on. Because my heart is wowed by God. And he knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold.
So I have one thing to say to this new year. Bring it on. 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 In Jesus' name. Come on, I want you to stand on your feet. And I want you to give Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, a great big praise. Come on, would you do it? Come on, let's give Jesus a big praise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing. My foes are many. They rise against me. But I will hold my God. Come on, bring it on.
Hallelujah. All right, I want to ask my friend Kent Johnson to come, and I think he's bringing his friend, is it Rick, with him this evening? Richard's coming with him. Are there any other shofars in the house? Any other shofars in the house? We got any other? All right, now, I want you to take your prophetic instrument of declaration. Listen, this is not a noisemaker. This is a, this is a, how many of you know? Listen, when you're in the house of God, everything's different. When the, this is, this is why you need to be in church. Because when the body is gathered together, there is an authority and there is an anointing and something that means nothing in the world can, can set the course of your whole year because the spirit of the Lord is here. Now, when I was a kid, hold on, hold on. We're not, we're not declaring yet, all right? When I was a kid, uh, I grew up in a big subdivision. There were hundreds of houses in our neighborhood, suburban Philadelphia. And on New Year's Eve, I vividly remember at midnight, we all used to go outside. And we used to welcome in the new year by just making whatever noise we could make. We'd blow silly little things like this. And I remember specifically people used to get in their cars and they used to honk the horn. They used to blow the horn. So this is what the Bible says. Blessed is the man whose heart is wowed by God. Whose desire is to be more and more like him. His house will be blessed this year. His heart will be steady this year. His hand will be open to help others this year. And his horn will be lifted up high in honor this year. So here's the prophetic declaration that we're making. We need to get a microphone to the shofars. Here's the prophetic declaration that we're making this evening. We're going to blow the trumpet. And listen, I know it's fun. This is fun, but it's not silly. Because when you blow your trumpet, you're making a declaration in the heavenly realm that you are going to end 2014 strong. That you're going to end the year in victory and not in defeat. That you're going to end the year better, stronger, wiser, healthier, more at peace, uh, more joyful than all of 2013. All right, you ready to do it? So I'm going to count to three. And when I count to three, the shofars are going to lead us. I want you to just let your trumpets blast and let's make a declaration. Let's wake up Greenwich. Let's, let's make them think that midnight just happened. I don't know what's going on on King Street, but, but midnight, the clock's already turned. We might set off a, a trigger reaction through the whole town, a domino reaction. Come on, we're going to blow our trumpets as loud as we can and we're going to declare, I'm going to finish strong because my delight is in the Lord. You ready to do it? All right. Oh, come on, you ready? Yeah. All right, let's do it. One, two, three. Blow the trumpet.
beloved. That's the sound of victory. Can I tell you, we just, we just hurt the ears of the devil tonight. We just, he's, his ears are going to be ringing until May. Thank you, Jesus. Can I tell you that this really is the right attitude for communion? You know, the word communion in the Bible, it means thanksgiving. When we come to this table, it's with joyful hearts. It's with thanksgiving for what Jesus has done for us. This is the ultimate celebration of our victory. Jesus triumphed on his cross. And because he triumphed, we have the victory too. I'm going to ask those that are waiting on us if they would come to service this evening. For those of you that attend regularly at harvest time, we're taking communion the way that we always do. The only thing that we're doing differently tonight is we have individual cups of juice and uh, we have cubes of bread. So it's a little bit different than you want might be used to if you come here regularly but in just a moment we're going to invite you to leave your seat come down the center aisle receive the cup and receive the bread and if you'll carry those back to your seat when everyone has been served we're going to receive communion together and the worship team is going to lead us while you come let's come with celebration let's come with faith with victory in our hearts in jesus name god bless you while you come Splendor. Oh, come on, give the Lord a big praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, I want to ask my friend Kent Johnson to come, and I think he's bringing his friend, is it Rick, with him this evening? Richard's coming with him. Are any other shofars in the house? Any other shofars in the house? We got any other? All right, now, I want you to take your prophetic instrument of declaration. Listen, this is not a noisemaker. This is a, this is a, how many of you know? Listen, when you're in the house of God, everything's different. When the, this is, this is why you need to be in church. Because when the body is gathered together, there is an authority and there is an anointing and something that means nothing in the world can, can set the course of your whole year because the Spirit of the Lord is here. Now, when I was a kid, hold on, hold on. We're not, we're not declaring yet, all right? When I was a kid, uh, I grew up in a big subdivision. There were hundreds of houses in our neighborhood, suburban Philadelphia. And on New Year's Eve, I vividly remember at midnight, we all used to go outside and we used to welcome in the new year by just making whatever noise we could make. We'd blow silly little things like this. And I remember specifically people used to get in their cars and they used to honk the horn. They used to blow the horn. So this is what the Bible says. Blessed is the man whose heart is wowed by God whose desire is to be more and more like him, his house will be blessed this year. His heart will be steady this year. His hand will be open to help others this year. And his horn will be lifted up high in honor this year. So here's the prophetic declaration that we're making. We need to get a microphone to those shofars. Here's the prophetic declaration that we're making this evening. We're going to blow the trumpet. And listen, I know it's fun. This is fun, but it's not silly. Because when you blow your trumpet, you're making a declaration in the heavenly realm that you are going to end 2014 strong. That you're going to end the year in victory and not in defeat. That you're going to end the year better, stronger, wiser, healthier, more at peace, uh, more joyful than all of 2013. All right, you ready to do it? So I'm going to count to three. And when I count to three, the shofars are going to lead us. 
I want you to just let your trumpets blast and let's make a declaration. Let's wake up Greenwich. Let's, let's make them think that midnight just happened. I don't know what's going on on King Street, but, but midnight, the clock's already turned. We might set off a, a trigger reaction through the whole town, a domino reaction. Come on, we're gonna blow our trumpets as loud as we can, and we're gonna declare, I'm gonna finish strong because my delight is in the Lord. You ready to do it? All right, All right come on, you ready? All right, let's do it. One. Two, three, blow the of victory can I tell you we just we just hurt the ears of the devil tonight we just he's his ears going to be ringing till May thank you Jesus can I tell you that this really is the right attitude for communion you know the word communion in the Bible it means Thanksgiving when we come to this table it's with joyful hearts it's with thanksgiving for what Jesus has done for us. This is the ultimate celebration of our victory. Jesus triumphed on his cross. And because he triumphed, we have the victory too. I'm going to ask those that are waiting on us if they would come to service this evening. For those of you that attend regularly at harvest time, we're taking communion the way that we always do. The only thing that we're doing differently tonight is we have individual cups of juice and uh, we have cubes of bread. So it's a little bit different than you want, we might be used to if you come here regularly. But in just a moment, we're going to invite you to leave your seat, come down the center aisle, receive the cup and receive the bread. And if you'll carry those back to your seat when everyone has been served, we're going to receive communion together. And the worship team's going to lead us while you come. Let's come with celebration. Let's come with faith, with victory in our hearts. In Jesus' name. God bless you while you come. It might not have been easy, but you had food to eat. You had a place to lay your head. He filled your life with blessings and good things. Thank you, Father. Come on, listen, if, if you complained, I complained a little bit too. If you complained a little bit, would you just lift your face right now to heaven and say, Father, thank you that you were so good to me. Come on, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you took care of me. Thank you, Jesus. You know, growth comes in the valleys in our life. So if you had a few valleys, the Lord didn't send them to stress you out. He just sent them to help you grow a little bit. Even if. Even if, even if, I'm going to trust him. Paul wrote to the believers at Corinth, I receive from the Lord what I pass on to you, that the night the Lord, Je that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's give thanks now for the broken body of our Lord. Father, thank you that you so loved us that you gave Jesus your only son. Thank you that his body was broken so that we might be made whole in every way. 
whole in our spirit, whole in our emotions, whole in our thinking, whole in our decisions, whole in our relationships, whole in our soul, and even whole in our physical bodies. Father, I pray for every person, Lord, in this room tonight who is sick and suffering in any way. I pray that the grace of your healing would come. You said that healing is the children's bread. I pray, Father, as we partake of this physical bread, that you'd release the children's bread of healing in this room all over this place spontaneously, Father. Father, we thank you that Jesus' body was broken so that we who were not a people could now become the people of God, the body of Christ. Lord, I pray that you'd make us one. Even as the Father and the Son are one, I pray that as we receive this bread, you would just release the beautiful unity of the Holy Spirit and the bond of peace as we partake together of this one loaf of Jesus. In his name we pray, and everyone said, amen. amen. Let's receive the bread together. Thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord. Grace, grace, grace. Grace, grace. Grace, grace. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just receive it right now. Thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord. Paul continues in the same way after supper. Jesus took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's give thanks for the cup. Father, we thank you that we have been redeemed. Not by perishable things like gold or silver, but by the precious blood of Jesus, the spotless Lamb of God. Lord, though our sins were as scarlet, you've washed us whiter than snow. And we thank you for the promise of your word that says, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, right now we receive by faith in the cross of Jesus, everything purchased for us on Calvary. In the name of our great Savior, everyone said, amen. amen. Let's receive the cup together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you, O Lord. Come on, let your heart just be wowed by Him right now. Let your heart just be wowed by Him right now. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord, to receive prayer. Beloved, it's going to be a great new year. Bring it on 2014, because we're going to end strong in Jesus' name. Father, I want to thank you so much for these precious people that you love so much. Father, I thank you for your presence here tonight, and I thank you as we go out this evening that the cloud of your presence is just enveloping us. I thank you that you're in front of us, that you're behind us, that you're above us, below us, that you're all around us, that you hem us in, Lord. Father, I pray that your protection would accompany us. I pray that your provision, Lord, would go with us. I pray that your providence would lead us. I pray that your peace would encircle us all through 2014, Lord. And we look forward to coming back next New Year's Eve and blowing the trumpet to say, I finished strong. Thank you, Jesus. Let the blessing of God rest on his people now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Happy New Year, everyone. God bless you. Prayer teams, if you'd come. Yeah.